<laughs> you want me to restart that? <laughs> okay, I'm Ryan Gibbs with Gibbs Field Ag LLC, and I'm an independent contractor with uh, Rantizel, which is a uh, drone-based spraying company out of Iowa City. So I own the drone. I run my own business doing this. Um, we spray spray uh, invasive species and weeds and we also have a separate tank that we put on it that we use for uh, applying cover crop seeds, wildflower seeds, um, and different types of, uh, of plant-based seeds on different uh, variety of terrains and crops. Um, so what I did here was I actually took the drone, I mapped out one-tenth of an acre real close to us so we can get a little bit of a visual here. Uh, we got some water in the tank and uh, what we'll do is we'll kind of show you how it's all automated and how um, this drone goes out and sprays um, in a field or or on a certain area so with this you can make it 100% automated where I can go and map the field and it'll do track lines and it'll just spray back and forth on them lines all automated when it runs out of product it simply pops on the screen that you've run out of product and it comes up and it comes back home to where it originally took off at um, you can also manually fly it and go out and spot spray different parts of the field. So if you have a 100 acre field, but you only have weeds in a couple spots, instead of spraying that whole field, we can go out there and just spray them spots, or we can outline them spots and pattern it and spray it and do it aut autonomously. So the drone is a, another tool in the farmer's toolbox that he can use. Um, you know, and also beyond that, you know, with uh, conservation and being able to put down cover crop seeds, wildflower seeds, a whole variety of, of different things and products and whatnot. And uh, it gives us a whole nother reality of uh, agriculture and different ways of, of doing things that are, uh, you know, more eco-friendly instead of having to run a big sprayer out there to do a small section of the field. So what I got here is the drone. It's got a small camera on the front so you can see what's going on out there. I've got the spreader next to it. It's a separate tank, so I could take the tank off and switch it over, and I can fill it up with seed and spread seed. And then I also have a small drone. This is my drone that I use for taking pictures of uh, farms. I, I scout my crops with it. And if you look at it comparable-wise, um, whoops, <laughs> uh, pretty obvious that you can tell the size difference of them. Um, so what this is, this is a, uh, a less than five pound drone. So a less than five pound drone, anybody can buy it, they can fly it, um, and uh, go take pictures of their crops and stuff with. Um, mine, the bigger one there, is actually just under 55 pounds. Now to be able to fly that, you have to have an unmanned pilot's license. So um, I had to go to the airport, take a test, and get my unmanned pilot's license to be able to legally fly that. And then if I want to put down chemical with it, I have to have a uh, applicator's license, um, which is actually uh, four tests that I have um, that I've taken through the Iowa Department of Ag and Land Stewardship to be able to apply a pesticide or a, a foliar fertilizer or an insecticide on a crop or on a species. So what I'll do is I'll set this down and if you want to see the remote, so if you can see that there, what I did was I mapped off a small section, and that's what the uh, little yellow lines are. And I can push a button here, and it switches over to the camera. So you can see my feet moving. That's the camera on the drone. I can push that button and go back to um, the field. So what I'll do is if I hit start, now I can set my, my rate that I want to put on, and uh, I can set how fast I want it to fly, and then for every load to verify that I'm putting on the rate per acre or the area that needs to be applied. Can you explain the rate a little bit more? So different products have different rates. Um, so like when you see the planes and the helicopters out spraying the cornfields, what they're doing is they're putting fungicide and what a fungicide is, is it's a product that makes the plant healthier. So what happens is these plants will get disease on them, uh, tar spot, leaf blight, um, a whole array of different types of uh, diseases, which basically they're, it's kind of like being sick. And what the, the fungicide does is it prevents it from getting worse. And if it doesn't have disease on it, it prevents the it prevents it from getting the disease and it keeps that plant healthier longer so we're not actually killing anything 
it's basically like a fertilizer almost, um, but it's called fungicide. The rate per that for that is two gallons per acre minimum. So that's label rate on the label that you cannot apply any less than two gallon minimum. So what I'll do if I'm putting down a fungicide, for example, is I'll go onto the remote, I'll put in two gallons per acre, and it will apply two gallons per acre. It's roughly two, eight gallons, and it'll spray off just under two and a half. So I'm doing, you know, just over an acre a load. And uh, different products have different rates. And, you know, we're not going in and knocking out a 500-acre field. I'm doing a lot more of the smaller fields. I'm doing test plots. I'm doing some testing for some seed companies. Um, this last week, or the, a couple days ago, uh, I believe it was Wednesday, I knocked out 110 acres in one day it was three different fields so you know that was a pretty good sized day for it we were putting down fungicide on corn um, but uh, so far this year I've got probably about 600 acres logged with it in the last couple weeks um, and I've got more to do here in the next week or two and then after that then we will move over to cover crop seed uh, I'll probably still be doing spot spray in here and there but we'll probably move more to the cover crop seed where I got close to 500 acres of that already lined up to, to spread seed out on so what we're gonna do is we'll spread the seed out over uh, standing corn and beans and to allow that crop to start growing before we harvest the corn of the bean crop. so um, back to your rate question um, I guess you can set the rate on here for whatever product it is if it's a uh, 2 4 D or if it's glyphosate roundup or if it's a foliar fertilizer or insecticide the label on that product will tell you what the rate is the minimum that you can put on or maximum you can put on um, and then with the the tank it just has a, uh, a deal on here where it tells you how far open that slide is to allow the seed to come out if you want it to come out slow or if you want it to come out fast and you can adjust your rate on that um, different seeds flow at different uh, speeds and and it empties the tank out in different so um, I've done a fair amount of research on that and um, so I've kind of got it down on certain seeds how long it takes to empty the tank and how many acres I can do with that tank to get a certain rate on if you want 10 pounds per acre or 15 pounds per acre or 5 pounds per acre I got it pretty well set to what we need to do so um, with that I guess I have it mapped uh, this drone has ran off a battery it's a 12 pound lithium ion battery it's actually that black uh, box right there it's battery the battery alone weighs roughly 10 pounds um, under 55 pounds at takeoff for us to be legal um, once you get above 55 pounds it's a different set of rules and regulations so that's why it's not any bigger than it is um, we have a weight limit that we have to stick to so um, yeah I got it mapped I've set the rate to five gallons per acre so it goes nice and slow so you can it will be automated what I'll do is I'll hit go I'll slide it on the screen and it will take off and it will go out there and it'll go back and forth and spray and then when when it's done with the field it will come home because I actually put a fair amount of water in there it's not going to spray it all off but it'll finish it up and it'll just come home it's one tenth of an acre is roughly what I have uh, mapped out on this little field here we're just putting down water is all we're putting down um, you can see the bottom leaves are starting to turn brown it's we got some lighter soil here and, and it is getting fairly dry so I don't think water is going to hurt it one single bit. Um, if we want to move these two out of the way here. Yeah, yep. Um, yeah, I guess today I'm going to be spraying this with some water. Typically I would not spray in this much wind. We're probably getting up close to 15 mile an hour here. Um, my typical rule of thumb is if I can look out in the field and I can see the corn waving back at me, it's too windy to be applying in the air, um, especially with putting lower rates like we are. Um, so if you ask, well, what's the most you'll fly in? Well, when it gets up to 10 mile an hour, 12 mile an hour even, depending on how I'm sitting, where I'm at, and what the field is like, um, that's getting to be about the point where we pull the trigger and say that's getting to be too windy for us. Um, so, it, you know, it's seasonal, it's hit and miss on timing. Uh, there's certain days where it's raining, you can't spray in the rain, and then there's certain days where it's too windy. So when it gets too windy, like it is right now, um, you shouldn't be putting down chemical in the field because of drift and moving on to neighbor's crops where maybe it does not need to be, or it could cause damage possibly. Um, but beans we're putting water on, it ain't gonna hurt nothing, it'll be fine. 
but um, you could possibly see while I'm maybe moving off target just a little bit because of the the wind um, and uh, most label rates for these chemicals will tell you to not apply with winds more than seven mile an hour or ten mile an hour that you're not allowed to be able to apply that product in uh, any type of wind like that now the drone itself will handle wind of mile an hour without a problem it will fight it I mean you can tell where it's really fighting it but it will be able to operate and it will come home without wrecking or uh, landing in the field. It has a fair amount of safety features on it. So if it loses signal, say it goes up over top of the hill and loses signal, it will stop and it will automatically come home. Um, when the battery gets low, it tells you on the screen, it's beeping at you and whatnot. Once it gets down to 10% battery, it stops where it's at and it just lands. So if you don't bring it home by then, you're going to go dig it out of the field. <laughs> So um, it's just another safety feature so it doesn't completely run out of power and just fall out of the sky. Um, it, it comes down to safety. It's got a guidance on it. Um, if you can see, there's a little thing spinning on the side, a little round deal spinning. What that radar. So what that does is it's constantly spinning. That detects any obstacle that might be in the way. Power lines, trees, um, any obstacle, if there's a tractor parked in the middle of the field and it's spraying, it will stop before it hits that tractor because it will sense that there's an obstacle in the way. Um, it can get kind of frustrating at times, especially if you got corn that's down and you're spraying it and that field is so uneven that the drone is going up and down um, because it's detecting that height off the ground. You got it set for a certain height. So I want it flying, you know, three feet above the corn. I set that height on there. And then by doing that, it stays that height above the corn. So if you got a little bit of a hill or a valley, go up and down with that and follow the terrain. But if you get into a field that's got maybe down corn where the corn's very uneven, try to spray that corn and then it'll think the tall corn in front of it is actually an obstacle. And what happens when it, it, it interferes with an obstacle is it senses there's something there and it'll start beeping and going crazy on the screen. It'll say, you have an obstacle five feet ahead of you or 20 feet ahead of you or 30 feet ahead of you and it will slow up say there's a power line 30 feet ahead of me it'll spray and it'll slow up until it gets a couple feet from it and it will stop and it will not allow it to hit it it will make you manually fly it away from it so that way there's no accidents um, I've logged on this oh I'm over 1200 acres and I've been doing this since last year uh, I bought it last year February so we've been spraying uh, since last year, July, was when we got legal to do it. And I've got, oh, probably 1,300, 1,400 trips on it um, without a single accident or complaint of drift or running into anything. Um, so it's been a very safe alternative um, to using a plane or a helicopter where you're flying 100 mile an hour over a field. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's got a lot of safety stuff on it. Like I said, radar, um, anti-collision. Um, battery protection so it tells you when to come home so it doesn't go dead out in the field and then you got to go dig it out. Um, it's all automated um, unless you want to manually fly it. You can manually go fly out and spot spray. Um, but other than that, uh, that's pretty much what it is I guess. I got a couple check valves here I got to shut so I can see it's dripping. So what I do is I flip open the check valves and I have to run water through it before I go do a field because it's telling me there's air in the pumps. So once I do that then I can go fly. So we've already done that before the video. So um, I guess what we can do is we can back up and we can do its mission. And if you want you can kind of watch the screen and, and it do its thing and it's going to be right there. So um, what we'll do is we'll back up a ways away from it for safety reasons of course. And then uh, what I will do is I will hit start. Right now I got it set for five gallons per acre. And I will hit OK. And it'll give me a self check every single load. Every trip that it takes, it does a self check off. So my signal is good. When my operation's complete, it will return to home. If the signal's lost, it comes home. Spray system, everything's OK. It'll take off, it'll go 20 feet in the air, and then it'll start its job. So I just slide it. Start operation.
How high up in the air can the drone go? Oh, I can go probably close to 100 feet in the air. 90% of the time, I am less than 50 feet in the air. So I am not even close to any airspace or anything. How far away can the drone go from you? Um, as long as I have good signal, like say I'm sitting on top of a, a hill or a knoll and I can see down across the field, I can go out almost a mile with it. It's about the farthest that I've gone so far. I mean, you can't hardly see it. It's just a little dot out there. But if you can notice, you can kind of see the corn is moving. And it's really a good sign to tell people that, you know, to show them, hey, we're actually getting the product into the canopy where it, where it needs to be. So that's the camera on the drone. Um, I got it set at 7.9 feet, but it's only about 3 feet above the corn. And the reason for that is that radar actually reads into the corn canopy. So once it finishes the job, it says the operation's complete, and it automatically comes right back to where it took off at. And once it gets to that point, it asks me if I want to manually land it or auto land it. And I just tap automatically land and it lands on its own. And then what we'll do is we'll, I'll come out to it. I'll switch the battery out. I'll fill the tank back up with product and I'll do the same thing over again. I'll hit continue and it'll go right back to, let's just say this was a bigger field and I just did one acre worth of, uh, of application. I'll fill it up and it'll go right back out to the exact spot where it quit, where it ran out of product, and it'll start right there and it'll continue on until it runs out and then it'll come back home. We'll refill it, it'll go right back to that exact spot where it quit. So let's say it starts raining or it gets too windy and now we only got half the field done, it got too windy, we gotta stop. I just hit stop, we bring it home, we carry on, go go home, go do our stuff because we can't spray now. I can come back tomorrow, I can come back next week. I can come back later in the day, whenever I want, next year, and I can go right back to that exact spot that I quit spraying at and continue on in that field until it's done. Um, I can also go back to that same field once I have it mapped. I can go back to that every single week and spray the same field over and over again. I don't have to map it every single time. Now, to map it, I can hop on a four-wheeler and go drive around the border of the field, you know, maybe before you got your crop planted, or I can take the plane, or I can take the, the helicopter, the drone, and I can uh, take it out there and I can actually fly the border and set waypoints. So I'll set little points all the way around the property and I can map it that way too. Um, we can also do shape files where we get a shape file, we can download it into the remote of the field and we can spray it that way too. So there's a lot of different options with that. Um, you know, like I said, if you just got a, a 60 acre field and a small spot that needs to get sprayed that's got weeds, I can fly out there and just outline that spot and spray just that spot. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different options with that. Um, and a lot of different ways to to do it, you know, efficiently and and whatnot. Um, I guess what I do, I haul it around in a trailer. So before we go to that, how long does it take you to map fields out? And you want to pull up a map of maybe okay. this whole field? Yeah. So. Yep. Okay. So this whole field, for example, um, this would be a 30-acre field. Um, I think I have it mapped in two different sections, but I can bring it up here. To map this field takes about 15 minutes if I were to fly it. Now what I actually did was this wind, I'd say it was probably March or so, I hopped on my side-by-side -side with my remote control and I flew around and I drove around the outside and I mapped it. Uh, but it gave me time later in the season so I didn't have to fly it. So I can just go right on the screen here and I can go to, uh, go up here and I can go to fields. And then I just scroll through them until I find uh, my farm, which is 100 fields. I know it's towards the bottom here. <laughs> um, so I got... I know it's on here. 
Um, okay, so this is actually just one part of the field. It's actually 3.4 acres. Um, it's called my saloon field. So we'll zoom out on it. And that's what actually, that's uh, roughly three and a half acres. It's got, it says 3.4. And you can see the track lines on it. You can zoom in here. The screen wants to keep moving. Because that's what it does. <laughs> but this is actually right outside of where, we're, right over by where we're at here. It's just straight south of us. So the blue dots are your flag points. Yep, the, the little, yeah, purple dots. Those are our um, uh, waypoints. So when I mapped it, I just pushed the button and set those points. Um, and then I can set it to spray however wide I want. Now, it does roughly 13 foot. So when I spray, I usually set it at 12.8. So I am getting a little bit of overlap, but it's better than not getting covered. So, um, it'll spray roughly 12.8 feet every single pass that it does um, back and forth in that field. So. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, I can set it above the corn, the height. Um, typically, I'll fly a couple feet above the corn. Um, you get into some really hilly ground, sometimes you got to set it a little bit higher so that radar can uh, adjust to going up them steep slopes. So, um, yeah, I can map any size field. I've done 100-acre fields, and I've done 1-acre parcels and half-acre parcels. So, I mean, I've done a little bit of everything. Uh, cattails and the right-of-ways along roads. Um, I've spread cover crop seeds, I've sprayed burr cucumber weeds, I put on fungicide, insecticide, foliar fertilizer. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of different options with the with this product that, that gives you a lot of different things that you can do with it. Um, I've sprayed with it, not a lot. We put a fungicide and insecticide on some beans uh, earlier this year. So yeah, I do spray beans with it, I've sprayed corn with it. Um, also done a little bit of potatoes for a farmer um, just there's a lot of different options with uh, the crop I guess pretty much any crop could benefit from using it um, we've done some demos but we haven't actually done any work with uh, vineyards uh, spraying grapes um, for a product and whatnot um, but yeah basically anything that's sprayed with a ground rig or a helicopter or plane or any any sort could be used with the drone to be able to do the same thing uh, from, in most cases, I mean, not every product that's applied is legal to spray aerially, whether it be with a drone or a plane or a helicopter. Some of them are only for ground rigs at extremely high rates. So every product is legal to be able to spray with it, but a lot of them are. Yep. You want to talk about like, the size of the drone and um, the cost and how long it lasts? Yeah. Yeah, you got about Okay, so the drone when it folds up, or folds out, I should say, is roughly five foot. So if I, I'm roughly five foot six, so if I were to lay on the ground, it'd be about six inches longer than me. <laughs> so um, all these propellers, they fold in and they fold out. So what I do, I put it in my trailer, I actually have a cage for it. I will fold these in and I'll unscrew these. And this whole drone actually folds up to 36 inches, 36 inches. And it folds up just like this. And I actually got a, a foam piece that I put on here that holds them together. And that whole drone will fold up. All eight of them, uh, uh, motors, propellers, all fold together. And like I said, completely full it weighs 55 pounds. So when you take the battery and everything out, I mean, it don't weigh hardly nothing. Um, and I actually, it's still half full of water yet. So it's, it weighs a fair amount. Um, empty you can pick it up with one hand they're very light it's all carbon fiber uh, you got a computer in there that that controls everything and then and, um, you got the battery so starting with the cost this little guy right here is 650 bucks <laughs> so I have 10 of these um, with 10 batteries I can run non-stop all day long without stopping so these little guys are about 650 bucks um, so they claim that you can get 300 good charges out of them before they slowly start depleting, which is no different than your cell phone. You know, if you charge your cell phone every single day for two years, after two years, it might be 95% instead of 100%. You know, and it's probably going to run out of power faster. You know, so you only get so many good charges out of them before they slowly start, you know, 
becoming less and less. Um, I've got, I've been running this since July, and I've got 10 batteries. I think I got roughly 60 or 70 charges out of every battery, and I've seen no difference yet. They've been running flawlessly. In and dry, fly the drone, how long will it last? So, yeah, so I will get one tank out of every battery. It will come back, it'll probably have 45% left on the battery. The reason why I switch it out is efficiency wise, because if I fill the tank up and send it back out there, I'm not gonna be able to spray off that whole load before it goes dead. And there's no sense in bringing it back with a half a tank of product left in it. If I'm gonna send it out there, I want it to spray off that entire tank. So I just swap out every single load. I've got enough batteries to keep everything flowing, so I'm not too concerned about that. I'd rather not run out of power out in the field because um, I don't want to dig it out of the field. <laughs> the whole drone, I mean, if you're looking at the drone with the batteries and everything, um, it's going to be right around that $25,000. Um, now, you can add extras to it. Um, you can buy the spreader tank, which I have over there. That's extra. Um, you can put RTK on it, which is the latest uh, uh, GPS on it, so it's sub-inch accuracy. Uh, this does not have RTK, but I feel it's just as accurate as the RTK models. Maybe not quite as accurate, but the RTK will get you within sub-inch accuracy of spraying. Um, but, you know, that's an extra option, a few thousand dollars more. But um, a base price with the batteries, um, you know, roughly eight batteries um, is going to be real close to that $25,000 mark. Um, so, when I guess when you can compare to that little one that I have, that's a $1,400 drone. So <laughs> there's a little bit of a difference there, but you can do a lot more with something like this too. So um, you got that, and then if you have a drone and all that, you obviously need a place to haul it around. You know, you can put it in the back of your pickup, you're going to need a generator. So I have a generator that I put in my trailer, a 7,000 watt generator, and um, we could actually there and look at the trailer if you wanted to. Okay. So to me about you went to Minnesota to do jobs. Yep. Talk about some jobs you've done. Yep. I've gone, uh, I'm legal in Iowa, Wisconsin, Illinois, and Minnesota, I believe. I'd have to look at my papers. I'm pretty sure it's all, all of those. Uh, last year I did work in Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Iowa. This year I've just done work in Iowa, but we do have some jobs possibly lined up for Wisconsin. Um, we are getting uh, the company Rantizo, of which I'm an independent contractor with, they are getting more applicators spread out throughout the Midwest. Um, so that way, I don't have six hours to Minnesota to go do a job. They already have an applicator, which is perfectly fine with me because I got a lot of work down here that I'd rather do work that's an hour away than six hours away. So, um, quick run through of a trailer it's just a 6x12 enclosed trailer, it's nothing fancy. I've got a 250 gallon tote in here and the only thing that ever gets put in that tote is fresh clean water. No chemicals whatsoever. That's my clean water that I will mix the chemicals with. Um, I typically I'll mix them in a two and a half gallon jug. A uh, full jug of this is enough to fill that drone up. So it's actually a perfect measurement tool. I got three, four, five jugs. I'll mix up four or five jugs at a time. Um, and uh, when I get done at the end of the day I got some rinse aid that I use to rinse out the drone, I rinse out my jugs, I rinse everything off, it's nice and clean. Um, I've got a generator in here, um, it's just a 7,000 watt generator, it's nothing super fancy, just a nice mighty M generator. Uh, when I get to the job I'll take that out and set it next to the trailer and I'll plug in all the batteries and stuff. Um, so what I have, I built a, a wooden shelf, I've got two chargers and ten batteries. Uh, each one of them chargers will charge two batteries simultaneously at a time. Um, so what I'll do is I'll pull the generator out, I'll plug them chargers into it, and I also have a little bitty charger from my battery, and I'll plug that in and, um, and uh, keep that charged. And that's pretty much it with the charging side of it, I guess. I just plug stuff in and it just takes care of it. Um, so let's say I were to go spray like... Uh, on, on Wednesday, for example, I went and did three fields. It was a 110 acre day. I went through less than five gallons of gasoline in my generator to spray 110 acres. So I guess when you look at it cost-wise, if you were to run a big self-propelled sprayer, you'd probably use 
I don't know, eight times the amount of fuel, <laughs> you know, to spray a big field. I was able to use five gallons of gasoline in my generator. Actually, I think it was less than that. It was like three gallons probably uh, just to run that generator all day long to keep them batteries charged. And, um, yeah, I got a small cage in here that I set the drone in. I put a strap over it to haul it down the road. I got them up. Uh, them green rubber noodles on there, or foam noodles on there to help protect it from bouncing around when you're going down the highway at 70 mile an hour. Um, and then I got a small pop-up tent that I'll pop up outside just to kind of be in the shade. Um, this year, top. Um, so I got a ladder on the front of the trailer and I can stand up there so I can get a better line of sight. So if I start getting into some hilly ground or tall corn, I can see across the field farther so my drone has better signal so I can uh, spray that field. Um, last year I stood on top of my pickup. That got to be really old. So this year we built that on there. I had uh, CMA welding out of Dyersville build that for me. It's all aluminum, um, so you don't have to worry about it rusting on your trailer and stuff. It's just a really nice setup. It works awesome. So everybody will see me go down the road to the platform on top wondering what the heck is this guy doing, you know? So, um, but yeah, it works really slick. It's a fairly lightweight trailer. It's easy to pull with a pickup. Um, nothing super heavy. Um, trailer generator all this stuff you know I probably got about four or five thousand dollars tied up and about five thousand tied up and all this stuff in the trailer um, so total turn key with a drone and everything you're probably I'd say under thirty five thousand um, which when you consider that compared to what a plane or a helicopter costs or a ground rig a sprayer it's a lot cheaper um, <laughs> So, but you also got to realize I can't do as many acres in a day as what a ground sprayer could do. So, you know, there's limitations to it, but there's it's, there's a lot of positives to it too. Um, it definitely has its place, um, and it's a great alternative and a different way for us to be able to apply product. So. So two questions before we go. Yep. What made you decide to start the ag drone business, and what's your favorite part of the job? Okay. Well, what? Why did I want to start doing this? Well. I actually seen a video of drone spraying online and I'm like, awesome. And secondly, I'm a small farmer. I don't farm a lot of acres. And for me to get a plane or a helicopter in was, you know, in a timely fashion was extremely hard because they're going to put the big farmers with a thousand acres before me. I'm the last guy on the list. So by the time that they came to apply, it was already too late. I was basically throwing my money away. And I, you know, they do a good job on big open flat fields ground and not flat square fields so the accuracy of their application was was not very appealing to me <laughs> and it wasn't getting applied when it needed to be so I thought you know what I'm gonna buy my own equipment and do it myself so I thought well if I do that well I can also do this as a side business too along with my farming business I can start another side business along with everything else I got going on so I'm like, hey, if I can do this a few months out of the year, make a couple thousand bucks doing it, you know, good little side business, plus I can do my own crop. So um, I actually heard of a company in Iowa City that was trying to do this. They were not legal yet to do it, but they had the idea and uh, they had persistence in trying to get this legalized to be able to do it legally. So I went down there, I talked to to start this, uh, his name's Mike Lott, and uh, this was last year in February. And so I purchased a drone with the company. I was the first one to purchase a drone with them because I thought, hey, you guys have got a good idea here and I'll partner with you and let's get this thing legalized to do because this is a great idea. We could use this in Iowa, you know? So I was the first one to purchase a drone with them, brought it home, did some testing on my own farm, um, you know, running water through it, finding out what it could, could not do, um, getting the kinks worked out of it and reporting back to the company on how this is working out. Um, middle of July of 2019, we got the legally be able to apply the product. But by then I had all my tests, everything taken. So the day we were legal, the day when I was able to go do business. So we had a list of people that had already called us that wanted work done, but we could not do it because we weren't legal to. So as soon as we were legal, we were calling them back and we were going to do a job. So, um, and, and we were able to do that. Plus I was able to put it on my own crops. So it worked out great. Um, and uh, we're starting to get into more and more different types of application with it and, and it's really been interesting and intriguing to be able to do different stuff that I never thought you could do with a drone. Um, my favorite part of it would be the people I meet, without a doubt. Um, I have met some of the some of the nicest, most intelligent, smart farmers and 
agriculture people out there that I never knew even existed. Um, it's amazing some of the back to and the different crops you spray and the people you meet and the knowledge you meet along the way. I've learned more about growing corn from talking to the, my last 100 clients <laughs> than I ever phenomenal the amount of knowledge that every all these farmers have and everybody's got their opinion and I mean you meet some amazing people in this job so it, that part on being able to go and and every job I go to it starts with the farmer and I get there and he's like well this is neat and by the end of the day I have the field agronomist there I have the seed seed seed, uh, seed salesman there I've got a couple neighbors showing up I've got a group of 10 or 15 people watching me at every job so you know it starts off with one person and they call everybody and everybody is just so amazed and intrigued on how how neat it is and how we can actually do it uh, for example I had a job earlier this week and the guy uh, seen me doing it on a neighbor's farm so he come over to do 30 acres for me also I said okay I'll be done by five o'clock I'll go over and do it so I went over and did his after watching it for 10 minutes he goes uh, you're gonna be doing a lot more for me next year he said I like what I see so, you know, it makes you feel good when every customer, I've yet to have a customer watch what I'm doing and saying, you are doing a very poor job at this. Every customer is complimented saying, this is a great alternative, a different way to do it that we really like. And it's just a lot of positive every day. It's positive. Um, the biggest downfall would be technology is not always nice to you. Um, you know, you got glitches and updates and sometimes it doesn't always want to do what you want it to and that can get frustrating but you know nine out of ten days are good so I'm good with that <laughs>